I really hate to end the video this way, but lightheaded. Please fit, please fit. He's starting to make a list of what we gotta do yet. So we're gonna want an oil pressure gauge. We're gonna want a temp gauge. So we'll temporarily wire up that gauge cluster so we can get those readings. Fill the radiator with water. I learned a long time ago to use water first. Then we'll empty it out and put coolant in it once we know it's, it's good, because 50% of the time, something's coming out and we're making a mess. Water's easier to clean up. It's not gonna run without a coil. So we'll have to crimp this end on our coil wire, temporarily wire this up. The torque converter is not bolted to the flex plate yet. So I'm gonna wanna do that and get some wires to the starter. And that should be all we gotta do. Hmm. That's annoying. Things surface rust so fast around here with the humidity in the air and us being so close to salt water. I really need to get in the habit of coating things like immediately with something. That's not what we're doing today. Stay on track. So these are coming from the distributor. I gotta get those inside. These two that we ran out for temp and oil, I'm gonna pull one of them a little bit, tape these on it, and pull that back through. Easy peasy. Leave ourselves a little tab to grab onto to pull the tape off. So here's a trick when running wires through grommets and things. Rubbing alcohol. Super cheap. I get it at the dollar store. Don't! Oh! Let this thing work. Oh. Don't want that in your eyeball. Spray it on your wires where you got them taped together. And it doesn't matter if you get it on anything else it just evaporates and that is one cool thing about using it for this is that you spray it on there it's wet it's lubricated slides right through the grommet and then it evaporates and disappears find our tape tab pull that off all right we accomplished one thing already it wasn't even on the list it wasn't on the list. So what is on the list? Let's get our wires to our oil pressure sending unit. It's down there somewhere. And our temperature sending unit. Let's figure out the length we need on this wire going to that temp sender. And then we'll worry about making it look good. Because everything needs to look good. Good and custom. Actually, no we're not going to worry about the length on that because we can pull it back through under the dash so this is tessa tape it's a high heat resistant harness tape this particular one this would be more of a, the outdoor one one that you would do in the engine bay or outside the cab i also use this softer fabric type version of it and I use this on the inside they make your wire harness look very nice and most importantly protected there's a link to these in the description so out here I'm actually gonna grab both of these wires together tape them just a few inches and then we'll tape them up separately and one will go down that direction for the oil and one will go this way for our water temperature. Yes, sir. If we had more wires going in the same direction, we'd be taping them together, but we only have one going this way, one going that way. That's even more than I wanna see. But now that we got those taped up, we're gonna pull it back through into the dash a little bit just until the end of this tape is in our grommet. Perfect. So the routing of these wires is pretty important to me because 
I really don't want to see any of them. I want it to look not only nice and clean, but I want it to look like it shouldn't even run. You know what I mean? Most of it, we can't do anything like that because we obviously need spark plug wires, PCV hose, and fuel lines. But I don't want to add any more to it. So here's some options we have. We can run this wire to the temp sensor along the valve cover. Use our bolts and a clamp to hold it. And then go whoop. We can go along the bases of the carburetors. But again, we're adding another wire you can see. So I think I'm going to go this route. Like I said, we have our PCV hose. We have our fuel lines. And there's nothing we could do about that. So we're going to route our temperature sender wire along with those. That way that should blend into what we already have to have. Yeah, I think that'll do us good. So we're going to use this female spade to connect to our sender there. Normally what I would like to do out here is use a heat seal version where you crimp it on and then heat it up and the insulation shrinks and it's got glue in it, it sticks to the wire, it's waterproof like this. But I don't have any of the spade versions of it. But what I do have is some heat shrink. So we'll slide that on first. Strip our wire, put our spade on there, give that a good crimping. Heat shrink over that. We'll grab a heat gun and shrink that shrink tube over it. Don't use fire. Guys, why did you let me do that? We put a male spade on there. <laughs> Don't. That ain't gonna work. All right, redid it. Now we'll run this over to our sender there. I don't wanna just put that spade on there. I wanna actually put some dielectric grease on it first. And then I'll keep moisture out of our connection so we can be sure that we have a good one all the time. You guys know where I put my dielectric grease? Well, I don't know, but that's not gonna stop us from keeping going here. I can always just put it on later. So we'll just put that dude on right there. And we'll run it along the back side of the fuel line here. We can put a zip tie here where you won't really see it. Another one there. Got some little zip ties here. The black ones, they'll work out very nice. We'll put them right over this black fitting and they'll blend right in. Spin that around so you don't see the, I don't know, what would you call that? Head of the zip tie? I, I don't know what whatever you get what I'm saying flush cutters true flush cutters that'll cut that zip tie flush so you won't have a little razor blade sticking out of it how you prevent that from happening when you're digging around yeah that looks nice you can't even see that zip tie at all cool Get one on our vacuum advance hose and our PVC hose, PVC, PCV. All right, that blends right in, looks great. Oil. This one will probably bring around the back side of the distributor back down that way. Because our sending unit it's right down here. There isn't much for 
anything to tie that wire to. You know what would work great in this situation is those magnetic zip tie holder thingies. They're like little round magnets with a tab on it that you can run a zip tie through. I don't have any here, but we might go that route. I might get some on the way. We could stick them right to the firewall here or the engine block. The oil pressure sender has a little stud on it, so we need a ring terminal. And I actually do have a heat seal version of those, but the ring is a little too big. So we'll do the same thing we did over there with the heat shrink and this smaller one. Crimped, sealed, ready to go. And then when we get dielectric grease, we'll smear that over this too. For now, it's gotta go that direction. We're gonna have to get on the ground. I think that's an eight mil. Here we go, trying to eight. All right, eight mil, woohoo. Working on the ground is definitely not as easy as it used to be. Where'd that dang dog go? Miss Egg. Oh, there you are. What are you doing out here, little lady? You stay in the garage. Come on. Oil pressure. Hey, broken. Oil pressure. Temp sensor. Water. We'll do that later. Exhaust, skipping for now, torque converter bolts, starter. That's all hanging out underneath the truck and I don't want to do that. Let's do the coil. So we'll need our boot. Coil. And our connector we got to crimp on. So this coil here, it's going to live under the dash somewhere. Up in there somewhere. We're going to end up making a fuse panel distribution panel kind of like what i did in my 64 impala but for now we're just gonna just let it sit up in there just to get us running so we're gonna strip off probably about that much then we fold it over like this put our end on it like that you need a crimping tool for this, but you don't have to get an expensive, nice one. I got this cheapo. I got three of them. They actually came with wire sets that I've gotten over the years. And these, they don't work as easily as the nice ones that are more like a, a plier style crimper, but they work just fine. So we got our end on there. This has a rounded center in there problem with these cheap ones is holding everything together there you go some channel locks will do squeeze it together and crimp it till your gaps are shut our alcohol spray works here too There we go. Coil wire crimped. So my eyes are always open. My brain is always going. I came across this. This is from like, I want to say it was like a radio delete panel or something from a early 50s car, which I want to build another one. Haven't found the right one yet. Don't have money for it anyway. I was thinking if we painted this, the body color, this Viper Red, and put it right there. What do you guys think? That'd be cool? I think that'd be a nice little touch. We'll set that right there, just in case. 
nothing left but annoying stuff. I don't feel like crawling on the ground, bolting that torque converter to the flex plate yet. I don't feel like building the exhaust. So digging through a scrap wire bin, I found some old four gauge we can run from a battery to the starter. We got this nice two conduct here. We'll use that for the fan. That actually might end up being permanent. That'll work good for the fan. Another piece of four gauge ground wire because we're gonna have to ground the, the engine block. Then we got this smaller two conduct that'll be good to run inside to our coil and gauge cluster. And we'll go with this violet for our starter switch. How many of you old car audio guys, alarm guys, remote start guys know why we're using violet? Well, we'll start with the fan because it's got this pigtail on it that we could just unplug. Now, ultimately, we're going to end up getting rid of this. This is just another failure point. We're going to actually hardwire our wires that we run to the fan. But for right now, we're going to use it just to make things easy. Er. Check. We got a power wire that's going to go from a battery to the starter. We need to ground the engine block here, and you know what? We're just going to go right to one of these starter bolts for now. This might actually end up being a, a permanent thing here. The battery is going to be all the way in the back under the bed where I can get to it obviously, but whenever I relocate a battery that far away, I actually like to put a ground right on the starter. That guy can use all the help he can get. Looking through the instructions for that gauge cluster, we basically have six gauges in those two. Each one of those two has its own harness. I like to keep things clean and manageable. I'm gonna take this soft Tesla tape we were talking about earlier and wrap both of these down to about there. You can tear the soft stuff. That other stuff we were using earlier, no way, you gotta use scissors. But you can see how much nicer and manageable this is. When this is on the back of that gauge, we'll have them both coming down like that. Real nice and clean back there. Leaving a service loop. You always leave a service loop. Don't ever pull your wires tight. You'll regret that one, I promise. What we're gonna end up with here today is this dropping down below the dash and we'll be able to make our couple connections we need, temporary connections. When we permanently wire the truck, We'll end up tying this nicely up there, but it'll be something that you can cut down and you'll have kind of this fountain of serviceability. Yeah, I like that. We'll go with that. It's a fountain of serviceability. So for now, we need the red on both of them, the black on both of them. That'll be ignition and ground. And one of them, we need temp and one of them, we need oil pressure. The temp is on this one and it says green yellow. To me that's looking like yellow green because it's a yellow wire with a green trace, not the other way around. That's okay, it's all right. This one, the red, black, and yellow will be our oil pressure. So for now I took the wires that we're gonna need. The other ones I just folded back and taped it to itself. That way it's just these ones that we need. That'll work.
work for now. Now I gotta try to get them plugged into the back of the gauges, which means climbing under this dash. God, I hate that. All right, I got those plugged in. We got our little pigtail hanging down here. Got our oil, tamp, ignition and ground. So we'll just connect those together. Power going to the coil, power and ground going to the gauge cluster, temp sensor, oil pressure sensor, power to the starter. We got our starter switch, fan to be our ignition and ground to the inside, and our engine block ground and ground for everything we're doing right now. Checking them off. Bolt that torque converter to the flex plate and do a some sort of temporary exhaust. I think we'll be about ready. So it's become kind of a thing here. But there's always a movie playing in the background. A lot of you guys have mentioned that it's fun to guess what's on there. It's kind of like the Easter egg of the channel now. Death proof. It's a good one. So would you guys like a little shelf here? Like a now playing at LT's custom garage tiki theater shelf where we put the DVD case? Or would you like to keep it a guess? I'm totally putting off climbing under that truck. Yeah, I know. Let's just do it. Torque converter bolts. Okay, one more thing before we crawl under this. We need a fuel line. So what I have here is some 3 8 fuel hose. Put a filter on it and a shut off. In this end, we'll just dip into a little fuel tank. The other end we'll put on our fuel pump. I'm hearing thunder. It must be close to four o'clock. 3.35. Oh. Procrastinating. All right, we'll do it. All right. Torque converter, flex plate. Now this could line up with a couple different holes here, I think. Just gonna make sure that we get all three of these lined up. We turn it to that one. That doesn't really line up. Go up here. It lines up with that one. It lines up with that one. The other one's on the top side. We can't get to it yet. We'll have to rotate this around. I think we won't be at top dead center anymore. Maybe we'll put a mark on the flex plate. That way we know if we rotate this around we can come back to top dead center, right? Um, I don't know. Or maybe just for this first start, we could just do these two we could get at. We could do that too. It's hot under here. All right, we're gonna get us some Loctite here. Dabble do you. Is there any left? Is it gone? Oh, there we go. Uh, in the hole. All right, we got one started. I'll get that other one in, and then we'll push the torque converter back to the flex plate. All right, I got a silver sharper here. I'm just gonna mark this where it's at. Whether we'll need that or not, I don't know, but we got it. I'm gonna rotate this around so we can get that other one, and then we'll rotate it in the other direction to come back to top dead center. 
I just really want to know that we're there when we start this up for the first time. We'll use this wrench on that torque converter bolt. We just tightened and rotate this guy around. Uh. <laughs> Alright, there it is. <sighs> Glad we made that mark because we rotated this thing around to make sure all three of those were tight and I was able to go back the other direction and get it right back where it was. Torque converter bolts. Done. Whew. Sure would be nice to have a lift. That's way beyond my reach. I'm just a clown in the garage. Lightheaded. Lightheaded. We are a temporary exhaust and some water away from starting this thing up. Speaking of water, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. We are so close to starting that thing. And that is super exciting and super scary. First starts are always kind of a nerve wracking thing. And this time, I've never actually had one sitting around as long as I've had this one. So it's even kind of more so. We're so close, we don't even have the same list we had. That's not a to-do list anymore. These are a couple of future projects that I've been thinking about. 49 to 54 Chevy two-door car. The other thing on that list is a 96 to 02, what's that, third generation Toyota 4Runner? Two-wheel drive. Anyway, last thing on our list for this weekend, on our little Chevy Love here, is an exhaust. Not a fully done permanent exhaust. We're just gonna do something temporary just so we can fire that thing up. So, I have some 45s. We got some 90s. We got some 180s. We got some straights. We got a couple glass packs. Now those glass packs will probably end up on this Model A. Unless they sound awesome on this, we can leave them on this. I'm okay with that. I had them on a uh, 40 Chevy, and I thought they sounded great. We'll see. But I do want this truck to sound really good, so. Start by grabbing one of these 90s and climbing under here. Oh, we still got a lot of work to do under here. That 90 is now connected to the header collector. So from here, we have a straight piece that's going to need to go over the top of our transmission cross member that we actually notched out for this. Please fit, please fit, please fit. <laughs> Transmission cooler lines, we're going to need to do something about them because they are right on top of that exhaust. That's no bueno. Other than that, so far so good. So here's what happened. I was under the truck, and then I was up, and then I was under the truck, and then I was up, and then I was under the truck, and then I was up again. Well, I started to get really dizzy. And at first, I thought that I was overdoing it in the heat. I ended up on my hands and knees with the whole garage spinning around. The garage was doing all the flip tricks. It was spinning and flipping around so much that I ended up getting sick. Stay hydrated. That was probably part of it. But three days later, it was still happening. Turns out it was a bit of vertigo. But I got some exercises to do, flipping myself around all funny, and it worked. It helped. It's, I've, been, I've been fine. So I really hate to end the video this way, but I really thought it would probably be best to take a little bit of time off. But we're back at it now. Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate you all. LTSCustomGarage.com for pinstripe art and cool t-shirts. See you out there. 
Right-headed.